time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the revolutionary new Remington Rolectric. Now let's all play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to introduce tonight a scholarly gentleman who has just been made Doctor of Humane Letters at Rutgers University, Dr. Ozzie Nelson. Thank you, Dorothy, and I'm very pleased and proud to be able to introduce to you a very beautiful and talented young lady. She's uh, formerly the captain of the girls' basketball team at Altoona High School, Altoona, Pennsylvania, Miss Janet Blair. Thank you very much, Ozzie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure now to present to you a charming gay blade who seems to know not only all of the questions, but all of the answers. Mr. Bennett, sir. Golly, with two redheads tonight, anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> and now in person, our news expert, Boulevardier, Bon Vivant, and panel moderator all rolled into one, John Charles Daly. Boulevard J. Yes, indeed. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again, we're uh, in hopes, with our two new friends on the panel, that we'll be able to give the panel a hard time of it, and I think we've got a good chance to do so tonight. We have some interesting occupations and some very nice people connected with them. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? J.W. J.W. Kittinger, Jr., is that yes, right? Sir. Where are you from, sir? Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. Oh, nice to see you. We have some friends in the house. Mr. Kittinger, the panel. Panel, Mr. Kittinger, will you come over and join me? Are you by any means familiar with the way we keep score? Yes, sir. All right, if you know that, let's just let the <clears throat> folks at home and those who have come to join us in the theater know exactly what your line is. Mr. Kittinger is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Kittinger, do you work for a profit-making organization? Uh, no, I do not. That's one down and nine to go. Mr. Ozzie Nelson. Uh, do you deal in services? Yes, I do. Uh, are these services performed indoors? No, they're not. That's two down and eight to go. Janet Blair. Uh, might you work for the government? Yes, I do. You do. Uh, might you work for the state government? No, I do not. Oh. That's three down and seven to go. Bennett, sir. Mr. Kidding, it is a huge air base at Orlando. Have you got any connection, whatever, with the armed forces? Yes, sir. Would it be with the air arm? Yes, sir. Uh, do you fly uh, some kind of a contraption? Yes, sir. <laughs> Is it uh, one of the newer type planes that you fly? No, sir. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> you mean we're still flying around in old-fashioned type Five planes? planes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, is it uh, it's something other than jet, or do you consider that old? Or am I asking a double-barreled question? That's a double-barreled question. I mean, do you want to ask specifically if uh, Mr. Kittinger flies jets? Well, let me first ask you, 
uh, do you consider jets fairly new? Yes, I do. Uh, so you fly something that predated the jet? Yes, I do. Does it have motors? <laughs> no, it does not. Five down and five to go, Ozzy Nelson. Good luck. Uh, is this uh, contraption you fly in something that uh, could conceivably stay in the air without a motor? Yes, it is. Uh, would it by any chance be in the nature of a balloon? Yes, sir, it might. You're not by any chance the young man who stayed up in the balloon for, I mean, flew uh, how many thousands of feet? 18 miles. 18 miles. In, in, in the... <laughs> well, I must give you, panel, a lot of credit, and we'll flip those just for exercise. Captain Joe Kittinger is one of those unsung heroes of what is basically the unsung heroic arm of the Air Force, the Air Research and Development Command, and he is indeed the uh, captain who took that, air, that uh, balloon upstairs for 96,000 feet, I believe. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Exactly where are you, Captain, when you're up that high? Uh, I didn't understand the question. Up in the air. When, when you're up that <laughs> When you're up that high, what is the technical name for where you are? Troposphere, stratosphere. Uh, the stratosphere. stratosphere. You, that's just this little old stratosphere. Mm -hmm. Sounds higher. <laughs> what do you keep an oxygen thing tied around you? Uh, no, sir. The capsule environment is a sealed environment. I do not have an oxygen mask on. I take the oxygen that I live on right out of the atmosphere of the capsule. I bet you wish we could tell you that all over again, don't you, then? <laughs> <laughs> it's clearer well, than some the, of your explanations. <laughs> about, actually, the interesting thing about the captain's flight was that one of those small mechanical or technical failures really fouled up your flight. In spite of the great achievement that you made, his uh, radio communication with ground went out almost immediately after you took your airborne, wasn't it? Yes, sir, the primary communication. Primary yeah. communication. You had more CW contact. Yes. Now, if the CW hadn't been necessary and you'd maintained your basic radio frequency, would you have gone higher? No, I would not have gone higher. I would have stayed there six hours instead of two hours. That was the only difference. And would you, if you'd been able to stay there six hours, gotten a lot more scientific information that would have been valuable, or would you think that you got the, say, 80 or 90 percent of what you could have gotten in two hours? Well, we considered the flight as uh, completely successful. Mm -hmm. However, it would have been uh, to our advantage we could have stayed the full six hours at ceiling altitude. What did it feel like when your radio frequency went out on you just after you left ground? Did it worry you much? Oh, no, it didn't worry me at all because we had this backup frequency and everything was working uh, just as planned. I'd say you know how to work the, the, the dots and dashes as well as, uh, I guess, anybody... Well, I got better it? as the day went on. You got better as the day went <laughs> on. Well, I must say you're a very great credit to the Air Research and Development Command and also to your basic service, the Air Force. Uh, I think, Captain, none of us quite realize how much you who do the experimentation and do it so quietly, serve all of us, and we thank you for it, and I wish we'd stuck the panel, because that would have been nice. Thanks yeah, for being thank our guest. And by the way, panel, just so that uh, it's all clear in your mind, Captain Kittiger was a jet pilot before he tested out to take this balloon upstairs. He flies the hot things as well as the straight up and down jobs. But a very good beginning for the panel. I think Ozzie and Miss Janet are probably inspiring them. Now perhaps we'll give them some trouble. <laughs> Let's try our second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Beryl? Landau, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs? Miss. Miss? Exactly. Miss. Uh, <clears throat> where are you from, Miss Landau? New York. New York? Oh, right. fine. Well, then you, I quite sure, recognize all these people. Yes. Miss Landau, the panel, will you come and join me now, please? Um, are you by any chance familiar with our scorekeeping system? Yes, I am. Well, fine. Let's let everybody from here 
to kingdom come except those four good folks on the panel know exactly what your line is. panel, Miss Landau is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. <clears throat> Miss Landau, do your indubitable good looks play any part in the work that you do? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could anyone on the panel, uh, any one of us, enjoy the work that you do? Yes, I think so. Uh, could both sexes enjoy it? Yes. Do you do it indoors more than outdoors? No. Two down and eight to go, Ozzie Nelson. Uh, do you, has it been established that uh, she deals in, do you deal in services? No, I yes, I do. Uh, these services, when you perform them, are they performed on somebody's immediate person? Possibly yes, a hopeful I question. I, 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 <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, I would say that the basic response to that is that it is possible that uh, that uh, might be the fact, right? Uh, now, uh, Dorothy asked if the uh, services you performed were done mostly indoors, and you answered no. Uh, are these services performed mostly outdoors? Very good. <laughs> 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 Logic, John, it just follows. Uh, now, it, it's established that you perform the services. Out of, I'll, I'll pass on to John. I don't want to hog this. <laughs> that means he's come up against a blank wall, John. Would you like to try to get away from it? Well, now, have we established that, this is, uh, that you work for a profit-making organization? Yes, I do. Big profits? Uh, don't. <laughs> uh, 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 you can get in a lot of trouble with that one. Of course. May I ask... Um, do you, uh, do you have to wear a uniform or, shall we say, clothes that you're, uh, that you're, the kind of clothes you're not wearing tonight? Yes. In other words, it would be a uniform. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly outdoors. Uh, would you always wear a skirt? No. Uh, no. <laughs> Three down and seven to no. go, Mr. Sir. No. Miss Landau. I've established you're good looking, but you also have a beautiful physique. Do you do any kind of athletic endeavor or something in which, which you have to use your body? Sometimes. Is it a form of sport that you excel in? Yes. Is it a sport that is done on land? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> well, uh, I think, uh, don't think it would be the air that would require this. No conference has been oh. called, please. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking aloud, not really conferring. Uh, does your work ever take you into the water? Yes. Do you ever get a good tan? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, is uh, observation and watchfulness part of your work as well as physical stamina? Yes. Are you a lifeguard? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Miss Landau is a lifeguard at Pine Lake Park in Peekskill, New York, Bennett. You can run up. Very close. And make your life safe. I'd like to do it. Be pleasant. I could drown almost every day under these auspices, <laughs> couldn't you? You suppose Bennett and I could tire you out in one 18-hour day? Spelling each other, that is. <laughs> All right, he's saying. Well, we gave him a little trouble, Miss Landau, and thank you very much, and may you have a very active and happy summer. It goes without saying that Miss Landau is a summer lifeguard and is busy being uh, a candidate for a baccalaureate in the wintertime. Right. Much luck with the baccalaureate and much luck with being a lifeguard. Thank nice you. to have you with us. We'll meet tonight's mystery. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I've asked my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves, as is the custom. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, Good. Sir. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? All 
All right. Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. Uh, Ozzy and Miss Janet particularly, you ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with Janet Blair. Well, everybody knows you, that's for sure. Are you in show business, sir? Yes! Sir, how'd you know it was a sir? I just presumed it was a sir. Bennett? Uh, it was a sir. I was so busy asking how she knew it was a sir, I didn't hear the answer. That's too bad. You want to take a plunge? I'll take a plunge. Are you in show... Uh, you said show. Are you ever, <laughs> ever been in television? Yes! Miss Kilgallen? Are you a comedian? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Are you a comedian? No! One down and nine to go. Ozzie Nelson. Uh, are you primarily in motion pictures? No! Two down and eight to go, Miss Blair. Are you primarily in the nightclub circuit? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Very good answer. <laughs> Bennett, sir. Have you got a wife who appears with you? No! <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Gilgallon. Do you play a musical instrument? Do you play a music? You mean as a basic occupation, Dorothy? Well, because, I mean, only, I only intercede uh, here because I don't want to mislead you with the answer. I know, John. Thank you. Uh, no, just does he play a musical instrument that we would know about? Uh, not uh, does he play it in the privacy of his den, but uh, if he has ever played a a musical instrument publicly. Well, this is a moot question. Actually, what has to be decided, do you play a musical instrument so that it would be known as a matter of public fact, or do you uh, just play it at home for your own amusement? If you play it at home for your own amusement, the answer would be no to Miss Kilgallen's question. Yes! <laughs> Mr. Nelson. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't... That reversed itself now. Uh, he, plays he, it he plays a musical instrument publicly. He plays a musical instrument, and that would be a known fact to the general public. Uh, is that the principal reason why you are known, because of your playing this musical instrument? No! Four down and six to go, Miss Blair. Are There's you... no conference call, please. <laughs> are you... Um... Here in the East, possibly to do a stage show? No! Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever played a character in a continuing television series? No! Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you tall, dark, and handsome? <laughs> <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Mr. Nelson. Uh, it has, it a, has anyone asked if he appears regularly on television? That has not, I think, been given not specifically a as a question. It, it has. Uh, are you primarily known as a television entertainer? No! Eight down and two to go, Miss Blair. Not movies, not nightclubs, not the There's been no call for a conference. Let's I have none of these mutterings in the background, please. Uh, I must say, I'm stumped. We've covered all of the different areas of show business. You can pass, Miss Janet, if conference? you want to. I think I better... Shall beg I pardon, I Dorothy? Please. May we have a conference? You may have 30 seconds for a conference. Uh, I think, do you think he could be... A, he's not a comedian. Should we establish if he's a straight actor, or do you think he could well, be a singer? A, he's not primarily moving pictures. He's not primarily in television. Maybe, Maybe he's primarily in, records. Could, must be primarily... Records. In, either, records. Either, either, records? Either, either records. Yes, records. No, we haven't asked that. That's probably what it is. Shall, Shall I ask that? Sure. All right, kiss, I think. <laughs> uh, do you primarily make records? Uh, Have you ever performed any deeds of daring do in some form of athletics? No, it's a... It's a... No! Nine down it's and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you a stage actor? No! Ten down and no more to go. You may unmask and meet Johnny Ray, who is a singer. <laughs> Thank 
is impossible to get. I must uh, say this, but if, if I had been on the panel and heard that voice, I would have said, Singer, impossible. You know who I thought it was? Who? Andy Devine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, by no stretch of my imagination, expected to get by Miss Kilgallen because I, uh, I've been racking my brain trying to think of voices, and the most I could think this actually sounds like when I'm on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I feel oh, Johnny, that was wonderful. It was the most raucous tone we've heard on this program in years. I hope he can still sing. <laughs> yes, sir. Ozzy said, he sounds like Rochester to me, and I said, half of them do. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, actually, you, you've been at the Empire Room at the Waldorf, and we were afraid, you know, that all of you would say, right off the bat, singer Johnny Ray. So Johnny made you believe he wasn't a singer, and you did a wonderful job. Well, the only thing I could say about being an actor would be is I've only made one, actually, one film, so I can't really consider myself an actor. And I've heard a few of my own records, and I don't consider myself a singer. <laughs> <laughs> we do, Johnny, and I, we I'm thank you for stupid, being a gracious what's, guest. What's the instrument, Johnny, that you play? Piano. Piano. It's featured in my act. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's always been. <laughs> he's, got it, he's got it with you? Oh, no, he hasn't brought it with him. I'm sorry, Bennett. <laughs> thank you, Johnny. It's wonderful to have had you with us and watch my We have just enough time to see whether you can do one very quickly. Will our next guest come in and sign in, please? Uh, yes, how do you do? Yeah. <laughs> Joseph Selby, yes. Joseph Furman. Where are you from, Mr. Furman? Norwalk, Connecticut. Norwalk, Connecticut. The panel, Mr. Furman, will you come and join me? You know how we keep score? Fine, let's let everybody at home here in the theater who's come to visit us know exactly what your line is. All right. Now we have exactly two minutes. Mr. Furman is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with uh, Ozzie Nelson. Uh, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes. Could I uh, possibly utilize it? Yes. Uh, is it a product that is worn? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Blair. Um, might this product be found in the home? Yes. Um, would it be found uh, in... One particular room rather than all through the home? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Seth. It could be found in any place in the home. Then. Yes, depending on circumstances. Uh, could this... <laughs> could this product easily be carried by a delicate creature like Janet Blair or Dorothy Kilgallen? Definitely. It could? Yes. It could be carried in one hand? Yes. Is it often carried in one hand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it a solid? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it uh, ever consumed? No. Small conference. <laughs> Excuse me, the basic it, product is. The basic product is consumed, but I say. Then the basic product is uh, some kind of food. Yes. Uh, is it in the meat category? No. Meat cat? No. no. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it something you'd have at a party? Mm. In a way. Yes, in a way. Uh, it, would it be on a buffet table if you had quite a variety of things? No. no. It could be at its basic. Actually, we've run out of time. This is a tricky one. I wish we'd had a little more time because it could be on a buffet table in its uh, ordinary state. But Mr. Furman <coughs> makes perfumed rice to throw at weddings. <laughs> He works for the Angelique Perfume Company, he sprays it on, and then he batches it up, and then he packages it. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Furman. You. Sorry we didn't have more Thank time. You, nice yeah. to have you with what's by. Thank you, Mr. Furman. Thank you. And now, uh, perfumed rice and all, until next week, 
<laughs> Mrs. John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, John. Awfully nice to have you, Ozzie. Happy trip. Good well, night. thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to have been here. Nice to see you again, Janet. Nice to see you too, Ozzie. And uh, although I took Arlene's place tonight, in truth, no one can really take her place. Good night, Dennis. She's probably kicking up her heels in Jamestown, Virginia tonight. Good night, John. Good night, and good night, Ozzie and Janet. You were great, and hello, Arlene, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? Transportation for What's My Line was arranged by American Airlines. Guests are flown to New York aboard America's famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.